Oh, theoretically, we are live. Yeah, I can see the 0.4. So hello, LinkedIn and YouTube, theoretically. We're here to have the, the Charm Qflow 1.9 beta announcement. And today we're I'm actually very happy to, to do this as part of the rest of the of the team, a part of the team that we really work hard on this release. So meet the superstars of the uh, of this meeting. On, we have Michal Huko, who's been with the Qflow team for quite a lot of time, and he's actually our expert also on the model registry and has worked a ton of MLflow. Uh, Michael, you also did a presentation, if I remember correctly, in the summit about it, right? Yes, yes, we were presenting the ML from a Kubeflow integration. Hi, everyone. Time is flying by. And one of the veterans of the old days of Kubeflow, we have Orpheus, who used to work on everything web app, at least on Kubeflow. So, hello, Orpheus. Hey there. I have to say, though, last time I used to do it, it was also from the for the upstream manifest release back in, I think it was Qflow 1.4 I was doing for upstream, but it's also super interesting to do it on the version of someone that's also distributing Qflow with some with folks working on, the, uh, on injecting and delivering again Qflow. So actually, it super, feels super nice to me so that we get a chance to do this. Ooh, and yeah, perhaps... and you, you forgot to introduce yourself, Kimonas. Oh, yes. So, hi, folks. My name is Kimonas. I'm actually, uh, I'm the engineering manager of the Qflow team in Canonical. And I've also been part of the project for Upstream for quite a long time and involved in some of the working groups. So uh, aside from also part of the Qflow of the term Qflow, feel free to also interact with the Upstream community and you can find me there as well. Mm. Hi, Johan. Nice to see you here. So then without further ado, let's get started on the... Ooh, we have folks from Argentina. Nice. So hi from Madrid, Slovakia and Greece at this point. And all right, we're here to talk about Qflow and the all and the better release that is almost uh, from Charm Qflow. So just a quick intro, which I always like to do, which is just a bit of an abbrevi of a quick intro of what Qflow is, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. But I feel that like I've been doing this intro quite a lot of times on the last uh, at, at least two to three presentations. So actually, Michal, I'd like to put you just a bit on the spot. And how would you describe then the Qflow project and how it's the components that it's comprised from? Oh, thank you for, for giving me the chance. So how I would describe Qflow, Qflow is an open source machine learning platform, which is designed uh, to simplify the deployment, the training of machine learning models. It helps you to create workflows for either training or deployment. And it also gives you the option to collaborate in teams thanks to its design. So that was just a short description. Oh, yeah, the truth is this description can get as long as we want it. The more you can go like deep on the Kubernetes, on the tools, on the use case, it can. But yeah, that's 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 quite quite concrete. That, what I would also kind of describe Kubeflow. And it's interesting because it's actually, for me, the most important part is that it's all, also a collection of tools that people are already using for doing ML. So it never tries to invent something new, but rather take the already established tools, whether it's notebooks or pipeline orchestration tools to be able to give to adapt to the whole MLOps lifecycle and give you tools on top of Kubernetes. So that's that's a big scope for a project. So let's go with the release. We're almost very close to the to, to finalize even the upstream release. So to give some context to everyone, this release was a bit more delayed compared to the rest, but it's, uh, we've seen very, very good and phenomenal work also from the new release team uh, from Ricardo uh, from Red Hat to actually coordinate a lot of the working groups and especially now the first month that we are in the CNCF transition which huge kudos to, to him and the team for, for driving everything. We had a few delays here and there and the test and testing and, fi and ironing out some last details but the, here we are with we want to present the Charm Qflow 1.9 beta in which this is based on the RC2 from Upstream Qflow, which we have been finalizing and ironing out and integrating more and more and testing. Uh, and we feel now it is at a good state, which people can now just go and take our latest Charm release and try it out. Uh, and to give some context, the these are not the, the deadlines have also shifted just a bit from what we see there. So if I remember correctly, the the, the deadline actually no, I think this is accurate. It will be around the 22nd of July to release the the final 1.9 release, in which also we'll try to follow up. So 
again, this is the beta which we believe Q fluids are the very stable state. So feel free to try it out and let us know of things and how uh, uh, if if some if you find something something that is not working as expected or something that you really like, let us know. And with this, I'll start with just a quick intro on the, all of the things that at least change upstream. At least this is a, a short list that we compiled with uh, with the team here that is interesting to expose to everyone following up the, the Qflow release. This is just directly on upstream. And the first part that the upstream is really going to focus on right now is they're replacing the auth service with the OAuth2 proxy. And this is the component that is responsible to act as an OIDC client so that whenever you try to send a request and the Istio will need to know, hey, am I authenticated? It was asking the auth service. So now we're replacing this for OAuth2 proxy, especially because OAuth2 auth service is now not maintained anymore since the previous company, Arikto, uh, there are no developers from that company working on auth service. We have some exciting new development from the training operator folks who are really extending their API to support fine tuning LLM so that you can make it super streamlined and defined as Kubernetes custom resources how you want to take a model and how to apply uh, fine tuning on it and train it into your Kubeflow cluster. This is super, super exciting. And there's so many nice proposals. Andre and Jochen, from what I remember, also talked about in the Kubeflow Summit. So there are also videos in YouTube if you'd like to follow that up. But this is super exciting work. Um, <clears throat> following on, mentioning also Red Hat in the beginning for the release team, they've done a good work on um, pushing the community to try to pay more attention to a model that we all feel is missing. And even from us, Qflow, from Charm side, we also felt the same. That's why we had integrated with MLflow. They want to push Qflow to have a stronger stance on the model registry. So for now, they're really in a very good effort from Combati uh, to try to, sub to have a new model registry that will be based on MLMD and act as an extra layer of API on top of it. And later on, even remove the underlying MLMD backend so that they will support more the multi-user uh, isolation. Ooh, we have someone from Lebanon. Hi from, from Madrid, Greece, and Slovakia. Then there was some effort to also work with network policies. So for those that don't know, Kubeflow already relies on the Istio to be the service mess for configuring who can talk to who. And as part of the Kubeflow manifest, we've also extended a bit and work with Kubernetes objects from network to have network policies so that we can even limit a bit of the namespace communication that is not needed, even for the Kubernetes uh, layer. Now, I might, this is something that Julius von Kohut has really pushed for a long time. And even though I've pushed a bit against it, I'm actually quite happy in the end that this is getting adopted and people will be able to try out and have one more layer of security. And speaking of security, the upstream project have really doubled down on the CV work that they're doing. So right now the project is have actually a process for scanning the CV so that we can be aware of the state of, uh, of the CVs. And of course, there are CV work for doing CV patches throughout the whole uh, list of components. And last but not least, the Kubeflow project has, as, uh, as always, updated a lot of the component version that they have. I'm not going to go into all of them. You can find a lot of those also in our release notes. But an interesting one that people keep on asking is the Kubernetes version in which the upstream project has bumped it to actually support up to 129, but they're also confident that it should work with even higher versions. And without further ado then, let's go to also what's new in Charm Kubeflow. So the last small intro from me since I got into, into this one is that Charm Kubeflow is actually a flavor of Kubeflow in which you're not using the upstream manifest to deploy the project in Kubernetes, but rather we're using our charms and our operator pattern in which every every charm, every every component of Kubeflow is encapsulated into some Python code that is responsible that then via some of the canonical tooling for deploying and operating software, we're deploying every application as an operator that encapsulates the logic for both running the component and also operating it, like doing upgrades, configuring it, uh, health checks, etc. So these are Charm Kubeflow. And to wrap it up, we're actually, uh, as I mentioned, we took the R at this point the RC2. We've tested it a lot, integrated with our own container image for more security. And we're, I'm actually quite excited to, with the team to talk about to you about all of the new features. Uh, and there are quite a lot of ones that I can, I can see. So Orfea, would you like to share some of the ones that you've actually even worked on and are excited to, to talk about? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so I could share some uh, 
I could share our work on Istio CNI. It wasn't me that worked on, on this one. But yeah, uh, Kubeflow 109 comes with, uh, enables the configurations of Istio CNI. And what does this mean? Is that by default, Istio injects an init container to every pod uh, in order to configure the traffic to and from the Istio sidecar proxy. Uh, but this until now required elevated permissions and this can conflict with some organization's security policies. So uh, Istio CNI plugins, what, uh, what it does, it essentially achieves the same uh, functionality, but without the need for uh, the elevated permissions. And what the user should keep in mind is that uh, in order for the plugin to work, they would need to, uh, con to add two configurations to the new, to the updated Istio pilot charm and which depend on the Kubernetes substrate where they have uh, their deployment. Uh, yeah, and we also, uh, this can be done, we, we, we provide a documentation page for this, where uh, users can follow and they can have this, uh, uh, they can enable this to CNI. Mm -hmm. And okay. I've also worked on observability, but we can, uh, yeah, I can, I can give Michal some time and then I can continue. Yeah, thank you. Well, we can maybe talk about uh, uh, the NGC container support. So everyone knows that uh, if you want to run machine learning models, you, you need a good graphics card. So NGC stands for NVIDIA GPU Cloud Containers, and the Charm Kubeflow now has a support for it. Uh, so you can run almost any container you want uh, in the Kubeflow, either for the training part or for the deployment part. but this specific integration means that now you you can run actually these NGC containers. The integration is also with the dashboard, so so uh, you can specify that you want to run these containers from there. Uh, so maybe that's one interesting feature. So maybe we can come back to Orpheus if you want. Actually, now that you mentioned the NGC, there was a lot of work in general we did with NVIDIA from Triton that uh, we can also discuss and also that was one thing that I was a bit involved as well. We test. There is a lot of hype on this new framework from NVIDIA, the the NIM, the, which is the Inference Microservices. And there is also a lot of work done from NVIDIA on how to run the those components with Kubeflow, and specifically with KServe. So there, there was also some work, both with coordination on some of our field engineers with, with NVIDIA on enabling and showcasing uh, the how you can run also the NVIDIA and especially essentially LLMs that are accelerated for, with NVIDIA NIM on top of Kubeflow with KSO. So that was quite an exciting one, uh, which is also similar to, to the Triton efforts that kind of relevant to the Triton efforts that we did. Yeah, so so now, as you mentioned, you can run the deployments on, on a Triton inference server through the KSERV. Uh, so that's another feature which we added. Uh, the integration is quite simple. You just need to create the inference service and then you provide the model which you want to run. And uh, then later in the details of the uh, of the inference service object, you can specify whether you want to use GPU or how many GPUs you want to use. So that was another feature added to the Charm Cube flow. Hmm. Now I'm seeing it. Actually, the thing also with serving is also, although we're not fully there yet, but this touch also a bit something that a lot of users are asking in this case, which is it's a bit around the observability, although we're not 100% there, but we have been doing some work towards getting, because observability, or if I correct me if I'm wrong, but can it actually translate to a observability on a lot of different areas in an MLOS platform, from the user workload to the control plane to a lot of areas? Yeah, um, ideally in an MLOS platform, uh, you would be able to monitor the applications themselves, the user wor the workloads, for example, the notebooks, the, the inference services. Um, yeah, so you would, uh, these are two different parts, but uh, ideally you would need, we're not there yet, but we've done uh, quite, so, quite a lot of stuff during the pa last six months uh, on, on the application part, on monitoring the Kubeflow control plane. And um, yeah, so uh, on that part, we actually uh, we actually worked on getting back back in one eight. There was some uh, integration with uh, 
uh, with observability. And uh, let's note here that term keep flow can be integrated with COS, which is canonical observability stack, which is essentially the a handful of tools that canonical offers in order to monitor the deployment status, uh, gather metrics, logs, add alert rules, and all of that. So yeah, 409, um, we've, we've fixed essentially a lot of bugs and we've ensured that, uh, that, the, that the integration we have is working. So that means that at the moment around 15 of our terms provide metrics. And we have been working a lot lately, uh, and this, this number will go higher and higher uh, as the months pass. And we have been working a lot as well on uh, providing logs for, uh, for of every application. There are some limitations, so we still have um, around less than 10 more terms that we need to work on in order to provide logs for it to log it. But, but yeah, uh, 109, not every term is, is uh, provide logs in 1.9 beta, but with the official 1.9 release, uh, all the other terms will provide logs to Loki, which is a big step in order to uh, to be able for, uh, for a Kubeflow uh, deployment manager, in order to be able to know what's going on without having to, to be on top of uh, the deployment and, and, and getting log, logs directly from Kubernetes or from Juju. Uh, and for that, we also have a guide where people can can follow and see how this works. And for folks that might not know, this can also, Loki can support also writing alert rules so that if you, for example, see a ton of error lines in your code, uh, support teams potentially can be uh, uh, ping that, hey, something is going on there, please take a look so, and be proactive if something is going wrong on the control plane. So that is super interesting work. Yeah. Exactly. We're not there yet with the alert rules, but we're going, we're plan to ha even having the logs is a is an essential first step. Uh, and seeing from there, we're also done some good work uh, this uh, last cycle to also streamline and test Charm Kubeflow with GKE. So at this point, this we actually supported almost in all of the public in, uh, all of the par uh, public clouds. And last but not least, and this is an interesting one, is that. Uh, for those that doesn't know, Seldon has done a, a change in their license. So from 1.9, we're actually going to deprecate Seldon and urge all of our users to switch to using Kaser for their inference uh, services. Their architecture between the two is very, very, very similar. And keep in mind that you can always have your own cluster runtimes to, if something might not be one-to-one -one out of the box supported, be able to switch and, and, and uh, fill, fill the gap to, from Seldon to Kaser. But from the following releases, because we'll not be able to further bump sell them to newer versions to accommodate with security fixes and new features, we're going to double down more on KSERF from now on. So um, I'm also taking a small look in the comment. Uh, Yahal, I'm not sure uh, for regarding being interested in learning more. I'm not sure if you were, if you were, mean, me, were meaning back to the NVIDIA name. But in any case, we also have our Matrix channel, which is uh, publicly available. You can find, get access to it via, via our docs. So happy to, to see you there and also help if you have any questions. And with this, our Champ Qflow 1.9 beta is here. You can see both our release notes for a more detailed description of what is new and what we have put a lot of time and effort and love into creating. And of course, you can try it out if you can via, uh, by looking at our Charm Hub with the regular commands that we have for deploying Qflow. But Instead of using the 1.8 stable track, you can use the 1.9 slash beta track and it will deploy uh, 1.9 beta with just a couple of clicks. So, so thank you very much everyone for joining and we'll see if you have any questions, feel free to reach us in Matrix and we'll see you online. Cheers. Mm -hmm.